So there's this phenomenon that I've noticed a lot of people who start using Linux fall into. Usually it happens pretty early on into it, uh, maybe a couple weeks after they installed their first distro. And that's people saying that Linux is too hard. They run into some type of roadblock, some type of error or misconfiguration that they just can't figure out. And so they throw their hands up in the air, they declare Linux is too hard, Linux is too difficult, you know, this stuff is only for nerds or brainiacs or whatever, and they go back to using Windows or the Mac OS or whatever proprietary operating system they were using before. And the advice that I'm going to give here, it actually applies outside of Linux as well. It's not just for Linux. Uh, basically applies to anything in life when you're taking on a new challenge or you're trying to do something difficult. So the first thing is if you start off on this Linux journey, okay, if you decide to install Ubuntu, Mint, you know, whatever, and use that as your daily driver, you probably did that for a reason. Okay, maybe you saw a uh, Richard Stallman lecture and you were convinced by the politics or the philosophy of free software, you know, you wanted to actually have control over your computing instead of it being the other way around, the computer and the programs having control over you. Uh, maybe you decided to do it for more technical reasons, right? More practical reasons. Uh, like myself, I first started using Linux because I had a very low spec laptop uh, this was a single core processor, and it actually came with 512 megs of RAM. I upgraded it to 2 gigs of RAM, and even then, it was still really slow on Windows. I think um, it came with Windows Vista, if I remember correctly. So it was still pretty slow, uh, still wasn't great. I couldn't really play games on it or do anything like that, but then I installed Linux to it, and all of a sudden, it's not using all of my system's resources at idle and everything is just really smooth and it just worked really well. Um, maybe that's the reason you tried it, but for whatever reason that you tried it, if you give up on learning Linux and using Linux, you're not going to accomplish that goal, whatever it was that you went in and you decided to start using it for. So right off the bat, you're, you're failing at your goal. You're failing to meet your goal. And there's a certain thing that happens uh, with the human mind where it kind of gets used to patterns. You know, this is how addiction tends to work, right? Is you get into a certain pattern of behavior and, you know, maybe it feels good or it feels, uh, you know, rewarding or it gives you an out or whatever. And then you just keep repeating that pattern of behavior over and over again, even though it's detrimental to yourself. Um, giving up is really detrimental, okay? and if you give up, even on something like using Linux, that's going to increase the chance that you're going to repeat that behavior again the next time you run into something difficult. Okay, Maybe it's going to be uh, trying to get fit or trying to lose weight, right? You run into a roadblock, it starts getting hard, you're going to give up on it. Or maybe you're trying to get through school, maybe you're trying to make some money, start a business, something like that. If you get into these little roadblocks and then you just throw your hands up, give up and say, hey, this is too difficult for me, it's going to keep happening over and over again. And it's going to start happening faster and it's going to start happening with simpler and simpler things, things that five years ago you wouldn't have given up at. But now because you've just gotten into this pattern of giving up when the going gets tough, you're giving up on simple things. And you know, really, at least the way I look at it, I'm sure some other people probably feel this way as well. I feel like giving up is worse than failure. Because the thing is, if you fail at something, right, going back to the example of Linux, if you fail with Linux in some way, okay, maybe you uh, do an upgrade to your system and you just don't do things correctly and so it doesn't load up right, uh, maybe it starts up, but it only boots to a TTY and you're like, oh, what happened? Where's my desktop? You know, what's going on here? Uh, <laughs> if you try to figure it out, right, if you do the research and you try to see what's going on and you go and fix it, then you're gaining a little bit of something there, right? You're gaining some knowledge for how to fix that specific issue. Um, hopefully it sticks into your brain, especially if you struggle with it for a while. 
Um, and then now you know how to fix this particular issue, and that makes you more powerful. Okay, the next time that you have to upgrade your system or you have to reinstall your distro, whatever it is, upgrade your packages, upgrade your kernel, um, you're not going to make that same mistake and you're going to go and do it correctly. And then you can also share that knowledge with your friends. Okay, if a friend wants to use Linux and maybe they run into the same type of issue you did, I, I've personally had this happen where um, a friend runs into a problem that I've dealt with before and I'm like, ah, I know how to deal with that. I've dealt with this before. And I'll either text them back step by step how to resolve that problem. Or I, if I um, have a bookmark of the article or whatever it was that I read, wiki, um, stack exchange post of how to fix this specific issue, I have it bookmarked, I'll send it right off to them. And then that way I'm saving them time, right? I'm saving them all of this hard work that they might have to do and then that also kind of elevates their uh perspective of me right because now it's oh i can go to kenny whenever i've got a problem with this uh, that makes me more valuable as a friend and they appreciate me for that and when it comes to learning linux because uh, here's the thing right people will say oh i don't want to learn uh how to how to do this i don't want to have to relearn my operating system um besides the fact that not wanting to learn in and of itself is kind of a problem. We're gonna ignore that for a minute. Uh, you already had to learn Windows and you're going to continue to learn Windows. You're gonna to continue to learn the Mac OS because the thing is, over time, these operating systems change, okay? The, these are proprietary operating systems. You as the user do not make a decision in how Windows looks, Okay, beyond some basic customizations. Okay, maybe you can change the color of your taskbar or whatever, but you don't really decide where things are. You don't really decide where they're located. Uh, for the most part, there's not really a command line interface in Windows. I mean, this is actually one of the beautiful things about Linux. Uh, some people, they don't like the command line. They don't like to deal with it. But the fact is the same commands that you would have used to set things up on a Linux distro 10 years ago, they're the same commands now, okay? There's old scripts that are a decade old for setting up Linux or doing specific things on Linux that still work because they still have the same commands, okay? They still do the same thing. Maybe there's a couple updates to it here and there, but overall, they're pretty much the same thing, okay? Think back, if you used Windows, think back to when Windows 7 went to Windows 8. Okay, how much did you have to learn? How much learning did you have to do to deal with that whole, uh, what is it called? I think the Metro layout or, or basically when Windows decided to redo their whole UI and make it look more modern, you had to learn how to do that. Okay, you had to learn what the new settings did because they literally created, I, I don't remember if it was with Windows 8 or with Windows 10, but I know for sure in Windows 10, there's all new settings, right? There's not just the control panel, there's now the settings area. And you have to learn that, you have to know how to navigate that. In Linux, you don't have to deal with that if you don't want to, okay? If you're, even with the GUI, right? If your um, GUI decides that it wants to update, you can stay back on the old one. You can continue using the old one. Usually they get support for a very long time. And then if they don't get support for it, if it's popular enough, if it's like a desktop environment, it usually ends up getting forked. And then what the pe people who maintain that forked repository will do is they'll keep the old aesthetic, they'll keep the old look, but they'll just update all of the things in the back end, like security fixes, bug fixes that need to be updated. Okay, perfect example of this is Firefox. So a lot of people don't like that bar at the top in Firefox, um, the search bar, the URL bar, now it's really big, a lot of people are bothered by it. Well, the forks of it don't have that, okay? Like the Pale Moon fork doesn't have that. So if you're bothered by this big bar, but you don't want your browser to be vulnerable to some type of uh, bug or security vulnerability, you can use a forked version of Firefox, so you've got the best of both worlds. You've got all those security updates, but then at the same time, you've got it looking the way that you want. So if, if you're trying to not use Linux, if you're giving up on Linux because it's just a matter of learning something, 
you're going to have to learn anyway, all right? When Windows, I don't know, 11 or 12, whatever new version, whenever it comes out, I guarantee you there's going to be changes to the UI. There's going to be, they're going to move things around on you, and you're going to have to spend time learning that anyway, except the learning is kind of futile in a, in a way because at the end of the day, you're not really controlling anything, and it can just get changed again whenever Microsoft decides to change it. And the last thing that I'll leave you with, a reason for why you should continue on with Linux, you should continue on with anything that's difficult and not give up just because it's difficult, is because there's fundamentally a lot to gain by doing difficult things and becoming good at them. And us as human beings, we tend to be attracted to people that are good at difficult things. And not even just like physical attraction, okay, there's that part of it, but there's a certain amazement that us human beings get when we're watching someone do a difficult thing. I mean, that's what sports are fundamentally. Whether you watch, you know, NBA, uh, MMA, hockey, any of these sports, you're watching the best people at this particular activity go head to head with each other and do things that are just amazing, at least to us, right? Someone who's not a professional at this sport and they make tons of money. They're famous, they're rich. And if you follow this same thread throughout all of the human professions, okay, that tends to be uh, the same thing that's going on, is the people who are rich, famous, popular, who everybody wants to pay attention to, everybody wants to be like them, they're doing something difficult and making it look easy, okay? It could be as high as the most famous sports star, you know, you think like Mike Tyson, right? Champion of the world or Michael Jordan, okay? They did something really difficult, made it look easy. Uh, all the way down to like a street vendor in Asia, right? Um, someone who sells fruits on the side of the street. So they take like pineapples, pomegranates, all these different types of fresh fruits, and they can cut them up really quick, do them up for you, and then bam, they're ready. Okay, that's something that, that probably everybody's done, right? Chopped a pineapple, chopped up a pomegranate. You know, any one of us can go to the grocery store and do that, but you can't do it as good as them. And again, it's amazing. People gather around when they're doing this. On YouTube, they can get millions of views doing it. Uh, they're probably not profiting off of it directly, but if they knew how to set up a channel and they did it themselves, they'd make pretty good money uh, just from doing something that's really difficult and making it seem easy. So. There's a lot to gain from doing difficult stuff, keeping with it, and mastering it. Don't just give up on something because it's a little bit difficult now. Power through it, and then you'll gain a lot.